the Australian film industry is at a really interesting juncture uh, with digital technology uh, and all the, the dramatic changes that are going on in terms of uh, distribution and the proliferation of multiple platforms, mobile devices, uh, streaming services. The traditional idea of feature film, uh, television series, documentary series uh, are still fundamental and critical, but all these new forms of content are merging. Some of the old models of making a pilot for a television show with a lot of resources and then maybe it gets picked up or maybe it doesn't. I think a lot of those models don't work nearly so much anymore as starting to make something and creating an online community and then using that kind of buzz to then convince somebody like a mainstream broadcaster to, to take it up. So things like the Cattering Show would follow that model. It's well understood that as a result of our population size, the screen industry needs support and regulations have long been there to ensure that there is a local um, presence on TV screens and, and in terms of film production. And so in the new environment, it becomes more challenging for governments to ensure that Australian screen content is across all the different platforms. But it's certainly not a question of whether or not there should be Australian content in terms of what audiences watch and how they watch it. It's more a question of how the screen industry needs to adapt um, to these different platforms and opportunities and how governments need to support content across you know, all the opportunities that are emerging. For children's television content, I think that we are at a real tipping point and if we are to have a sustainable industry and a robust production sector for children's content, we need to have new policy frameworks and new supports for children's television. I think viewers need to, to get a lot smarter and look, nobody's going to ever stop watching reality TV, but what people don't understand is when they watch nothing but reality TV and then complain that there's not a lot of Australian shows to watch, they're part of the reason because reality TV doesn't need script writers, doesn't need a lot of people, it's so cheap to make and the network has to pay such an enormous amount of money to get the rights to screen that. So say like Big Brother, for example, is a franchise uh, that was developed in the Netherlands. So to screen a season of Big Brother, they have to pay a franchise of something like 30 million, 40 million to do it just for one season. So just spread that across every other show that you watch, a big reality TV show, that's how it works. So that 30 or 40 million doesn't go into another drama, Australian drama, comedy, or children's drama, teen drama, stuff like that. And then, then audiences complain, oh, well, there's nothing to watch, so I watch American shows, so we're in this vicious cycle. Because national cinema or Australian content, it's not just about producing for Australians. It's about putting an Australian perspective out there and an Australian perspective, of course, can be as diverse as we Australians are ourselves, you know, and finding ways that the gatekeepers are not too restrictive is, I think, important to continuing to find kind of new platforms, new stories, new audiences. So I don't know how we can educate people to embrace Australian drama more. But my hope lies in um, subscription television stations, uh, Australian ones that will come down the pike, the ones that exist already from overseas like Netflix, etc. But Australian ones that may come down the pike and also stuff like I'm doing myself now, which is launching my own internet YouTube TV station and putting my own content on. Although I know less about it, I'm also interested in it, the kind of the YouTube model, you know, finding the area of, of niche interest and again, growing that community. Young filmmakers here in Australia need to stop comparing our industry to Hollywood because it will never be like that and to think, okay, how can I make great Australian stories with the resources that are available to me and fight for them. Whenever they're saying in the, the government's saying in the budget, we're gonna cut funding to the arts, go and fight for it. Go and scream outside Parliament House. Why, why, why? You know, why are you letting our culture die? You know, that sort of stuff. So I think that's very important. And in Australia, we, we can get very complacent about this sort of thing, but it is important to fight for our culture and our art. It's a no easy path, no way. But of course, we need to continue to help them and be strong all together. And I think we need to fight 
um, this bad talk on, on, on cut on budgets for the industry because I think it's not on. Uh, as I said, there's so much indicators and in the first place economic indicators that goes against it. So we should really, really battle that. And of course, I think they need to be strong because for the moment there is not enough opportunity for development. They need more much more. And as I said, examples like Denmark and Korea are the good examples to look at and be bold in your thinking of renewing policies and trying to convince policy makers. And the younger generation need to feed them because, you know, uh, it's a completely new environment. Uh, the environment is going to continue to change and flexibility is going to be a prime quality of that younger generation uh, if they want to make it. A lot of young Australian filmmakers and I feel really sad for them saying this because it just wasn't the case when I was young and started out. I mean, I got my first paid job as a writer when I was 19 by the ABC. And I think that a lot of young Australian screenwriters don't have that opportunity because back in the day when I started in the late 80s, it was the real golden age of Australian TV. There was so much drama and stuff being produced and you actually got to the stage where, and this is honestly the truth, I was afraid to answer the phone for about eight years there because it was pre-mobile phones. Well, they had them, but they were those big brick things and people just didn't have mobile phones. And I was afraid to answer the phone because you'd be thinking, oh my God, there's another producer asking or someone wanting me to work for them and I just have to say no because I'm so busy. I've got too much work. And people would get really upset if you said no. It's the exact opposite now and there's just not as much work. And I think, and I'll say this and I will stand by it, that our industry has become a confederacy of gatekeepers. And these gatekeepers who are there, you, you can't even get someone's phone number now. Um, you have to get past these development people and they're modelling it on America. But the thing about America is it lets people in. It has internships and it lets new talent in. Every new show will have young writers. And Screen Queensland and people like that will congratulate themselves by saying, oh, but we have these wonderful initiatives. Look, you know, we're taking them on a development camp or we're giving them a million dollars to make a movie. Where are those movies? I haven't seen them. What's a million dollars? is going to do nothing it's just going to mean people don't get paid um, there's no money for advertising it's going to be low budget it, million dollars is no budget as far as I'm concerned so I think that they have to be a lot more honest with what they're doing and instead of putting it under this veneer of we're helping people they have to really start putting their money where their mouth is the fe federal government has to start doing that but also the companies that exist have to start letting young talent in and uh, we shouldn't be relying on funding I say this to students all the time you know in Hollywood they laugh at you you know what is this government funding stuff you know like and I call it the chook raffle because it is it's a big chook raffle so I never relied on funding even though some of my stuff ironically did get funded but never relied on that and with my own projects well I'm gonna have my own TV station is so I don't have to rely on stuff like that and there's so many options open to young filmmakers now like crowdfunding if you do it right it works guys crowdfunding you can get your own YouTube TV station up get a profile make content on your iPhone and put it on YouTube. You can start getting your people's attention with your work straight away, which was not available in my day. And also the film industry is increasingly becoming um, more integrated into other industries. So filmmakers, whereas in the past you would aim to work in the core screen production sectors, so i.e. feature film production, television production, documentary production, filmmakers increasingly can have really exciting careers working for the advertising industries, uh, for energy industries, making media videos, corporate media videos, advertising videos, social media, uh, entertainment. There's lots of opportunities on the horizon and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens as traditional distribution platforms, um, traditional regulation frameworks are really being challenged by uh, all the new services and new platforms that are emerging. Like our graduate D. Deng, who set up Hire Hive into kind of business models that take these skills and make them work for what sometimes gets called the disruptive economy. I'm not so keen on that term. But you know, the economy that unites things like Airbnb and Uber, the economy that takes resources and, and shares them 
in ways that also provide a living for people. So it's not a question of whether Australian content should continue or it, it, it is any less relevant. It absolutely is. It's just about how they should be supported and developed in these new frameworks. I think that we live in a world where images and sounds are really primary vehicles for storytelling and communication and that it's really another literacy and I think that you know everybody might have an iPhone in their pocket that or the equivalent a smartphone that can deliver quite good quality content but that doesn't mean that everybody's a storyteller. I think that um, the ability to kind of have a have a vision have a creative idea work with people in different um, with different skill sets but working together to create something and then finding an audience for it I think that there's enormous skill and possibility in all of that. At this point the industry is a lot more sustainable and so the range of projects that companies are developing are more ambitious with digital technology and the ability for people to stay in Australia but work internationally only means that we have a stronger base for our own domestic film industry. So I think um, Australian storytelling and the Australian screen industry will continue to grow and will continue to do great things. I think that old idea about only thinking about success in terms of the box office is now a redundant idea and there's a whole range of other measures that need to kind of be taken account to think about how successful we are and I think it's pretty clear in terms of the amount of successful talent we have working overseas, um, the quality of the film and television programs that we're making here, um, but also overseas is, is phenomenal. The industry will continue to grow and do good things.